everyone. Welcome or welcome back to our channel, Waliami. My name is Alejandra and in this week's video we're going to be decorating for the holidays and making our off-grid cabin even cozier. In case you don't already know this about us, my partner Warner and I have been nomadic for quite a long time. We haven't had our own base and therefore decorating has not really been in the books for a long time. That means that we don't have any decorations to get started. Furthermore, we don't want to just go out and buy a ton of decorations that we might not like or enjoy in the future and our budget is pretty low this year. So this week my goal is trying to get the house lovely and festive and cozy but without spending much, just using what we have around us. I'm going to get a lot of foliage from our land to use inside and we're maybe going to make some of our own decorations. But first I wanted to paint some of the walls in the living room to make the base a bit cleaner. The weather is very gloomy, we barely have electricity. <laughs> So I think this is a good moment to distract myself by painting the walls of the living room. We didn't want to spend any money on paint now before we do any sort of renovations because of course it will just go to waste. But the option of just waiting it out till we do renovations with these yellow walls, it just is not good enough either. So I had a thought the other day that the walls that we are going to throw down, we could paint with the leftover cans of paint because they're only going to be here for a few months and then we will have a lighter, brighter space. I hope we have some paint first. I, I know that there are some cans, but I don't know how nice they are. So let's go check that out. Okay, okay, let's see. It's white. Needs to be mixed. Needs to be mixed for sure. And I have a paintbrush. It's a bit of a shame to use it for plastic paint, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not sure this paint works well. Look how see-through it is. Look, paint is practically see-through. Now that the living room is feeling a bit lighter and brighter, I find it easier to start thinking of what we can do to decorate for the holidays. As I said before, we're mainly going to forage from our land. I also will use fruits to decorate because that's an easy thing that then won't go to waste afterwards. I think the only thing I will be buying over the coming days is a couple of Christmas lights just to add the light element. Cannot make those myself. So yeah, I'll, I'll be buying some Christmas lights, but that should be about it. So I hope you enjoy this very minimal, very basic decorating for the holidays video. Before we get into all things festive though, I want to show you some clips of a lovely hike we did with some friends recently. I want you to see how beautiful this area can truly be and it was a hike that we didn't know existed until now. So we're very very happy to have discovered it. Hope you enjoy the views. We decided to take a little break from our to-do routine and actually do something nice. We've come to do a hike with our friends from the valley and then we've also brought food to have a picnic here and just enjoy this beautiful day. The weather is stunning and I think tomorrow it will go down at least 10 degrees so it's gonna get considerably colder so you have to make the most of it while it's here. Look at this amazing tree. It's here in, the, in between the rock and then it has brought down the roots till the soil so I can get the nutrients. Oh this place is truly true. I had no idea this existed here. It's really one of the most beautiful spots I've been. It's so gorgeous. I'm really glad to have discovered this place thanks to our neighbors because it's magical. I, I cannot, I don't know if the camera captures how beautiful it is, but it feels like a little pocket of paradise. The silence. So Now let's get into decorating. We are getting into the festive spirit. Not that we are especially holiday people, but I think it will make this place feel much more cozy and nice. But we have no decorations. We've been nomadic for the past... Couple of years. Many years. And we don't have any decorations. We only have a tiny few that I bought secondhand in the Netherlands, but we're not in the Netherlands, clearly. So we're going to decorate the house using only foraged stuff from our garden. And then also we're gonna make some decorations with what we have here. This morning, I made some paper mache clay with some leftover newspaper strips that came in a package that we received, some leftover package stuff, and I thought we would make decorations together. I think I'm gonna try to make a little star. 
Look at my little star. Ooh, no, you won't see it at all. It's gonna be fascinating to watch us in complete silence. So far, not the romantic activity I thought it would be. Oh, it is very nice. <laughs> what? What are you saying? Could have not have touched this again. Like, no, it's the wonkiest. Okay, I have one star made. Do you see it? I think that's cute. This is basically <laughs> us crafting. Me getting extremely frustrated with the world. <laughs> me laughing. Making me more angry. I'm not. I just don't understand why you're so angry. Like, who cares? This is supposed to be fun. Yeah, this is all my insecurities come up in these moments. <laughs> because you cannot make a star. Uh, yeah. Basically, I'm not saying it's, uh, it's logical. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm laughing too much. <laughs> One second. I want to start like nice holiday traditions so that we put more attention to having fun this time of the year. Well, we can do that. What traditions would you like to have? Not doing this. <laughs> Making ornaments while you get comfy. Yeah, yeah, but that's just my insecurity, like mm -hmm. getting the hold of me. Like I just need to learn to work with that. So making ornaments every year? What else? Like just decorating the house properly together, taking some time to do it. Going to the Christmas market. Yeah, but Spain is not really good with Christmas markets. No, huh? it would be a perfect country for it. Wh why? Oh, because it has really nice food and stuff. Like you can have so many stands. Yeah, but we have so many bars. Wow, that looks really good. Good job, babe. What other Christmas traditions do you want to have? What can you have? Like, what do people do normally? Like, I think we have been out of it for so long that... We don't even cannot think. That's the thing, like Spanish Christmas traditions, there's not that many. I mean, we do, but they're more classic. So in Spain, traditionally, you put out the um, nativity scene at home. You have a nativity scene, and if you're really into it, then you make it this huge village with water, and like, you, you set up rivers, and you set up a bridge to cross, and all that sorts of stuff. Then on the 24th in the night you have the dinner. Now on the 24th in the night as well Santa Claus comes but that was not a thing before. Until very recently it wasn't a thing. The 25th is again family lunch. A lot of Spanish families use the two, the dinner and the lunch to switch between parts of the family. On the 5th of January we have the Cabalgata de Reyes which is the parade of the three kings, wise men. How are they called in English? Three kids. So there is always a, a big parade that they throw candy out for kids and stuff. On the 6th in the morning, there's the presents. That was the traditional moment. But there's no more Christmas traditions. Oh yeah, for the Three Kings, there is a cake that's called a Roscón de Reyes. We're gonna order it this year from a vegan pastry, so we'll show you. And in New Year's, we have a tradition in the evening that we have 12 grapes. In case you didn't know, that's how we think. I'm scared of saying that's how it's celebrated in Spain whatever because people are going to be like no in spain we also have the thing that there's a lot of regional things that i don't know how is it in your country is there anything cool that we can adopt i want to adopt certain stuff lunar new year i would love to adopt that. Oh, lunar new year is the best i wish we celebrated lunar new year here i really want to go back to asia for lunar new year we've yeah. only experienced it in malaysia but it was awesome this is the wonkiest star ever it's okay what is going on <laughs> This is not really a Christmas thing, but the holidays. Let's just call it, call it holidays, because we're not really religious, so we don't really care when it comes. So in the holiday season, we want to also do the reflection, the seeing like how the year has gone. And for me, it's a way of really becoming aware of what you've lived through, taking into account lessons learned. So it's a moment of appreciation, no? Yeah, but it's, it's very easy like to go through life without realizing anything or without stopping, because you always have stuff going on. And I really like those moments of reflecting and having a, a bit of a deeper thought process about what you're going through, etc. I think for a lot of people it helps that there's like a break and then you start fresh. So it's a nice moment for us to do that. We've been doing the word of the year for a few years now and that has been fun. I think the lights and stuff, the, the keeping the house cozy is something that I want to extend to the rest of January. Yeah, we should. It's going to be very dark and gray here in January yeah. and February as well. I think that's a nice thing of celebrating the holidays in places where it's cold and winter that it provides a break in all the darkness done with the stars we got ten. feeling better much better we had fun in the end when we turned off the camera <laughs>
And this is my own childhood insecurities, don't worry. <laughs> but okay. yeah, we got some stars, I'll made some... Christmas tree. We'll show, I'll show me room. Some little turds. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> They're little cranberries. Oh, cranberries. <laughs> okay, so now we have some oranges and... I, wait, let me look at the term. They're called pomanders. But what you do is you stick clove in it and then it extracts the smell slowly over time. So it smells really nice. And then if you want it to dry out fully, because you can make it like it will dry out fully and it not get fungus, you have to put a mixture of uh, cinnamon, ginger and perhaps other spices, allspice, and put it in a paper bag and let it dry in that. But I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll Why just not? put it I out. I think that's a good idea. Then it will be dry for next year. I would enjoy it for a little bit and then see. I saw online that it's difficult to stick it in so that it's easier if you have a toothpick to create the hole first. So we can use a wire for that. Why I'm excited about this is that a huge component of coziness is smell. If we make the house smell lovely, it will make us feel nice here. Mmm, smells good. I love that we can make all these things with things in our pantry. We haven't had to buy a single thing so far. I think I really like um, Christmassy smells because my favorite types of smells are woodsy. I like vanilla as well, but I'm not a floral scent type of person, so Christmas smells are really ideal for me. I love cinnamon. I saw someone that said that if you keep them out in room temperature, they tend to go moldy at some point, so the cinnamon and whatever helps. But it also can be that you have them out during the day, and then at night you put them in the fridge. We don't have a fridge, but we can put them outside. Here's where my perfectionism comes into play and I don't have as much fun because I'm like the pattern is not even I get frustrated over something that doesn't matter at all whereas here you're feeling more confident no? Monotonous work, yeah, <laughs> absolutely It will be nice to have the house also a bit decorated for when people come stay in Good <laughs> Happy? It does smell really good so is your favorite holiday the the Lunar New Year? Yeah. I think it is for me as well. I used to love Diwali when I was a kid in India, but I like the lights, but I don't think I would like the fireworks now. And I love Holi. I think Holi is really nice. It's also an Indian festival, in case you don't know, that has the color powders. But yeah, I think Lunar New Year is really cool. And I really like how there's so much to learn because they have so many superstitions and traditions and stuff. So there's so many things you can do. We got a palm reading in Malaysia and Warner got told that he was going to have a very unlucky year. Three years. But especially a very unlucky year, you know? And then the guy gave you a, a snake sticker because he's from the year of the snake to stick on your phone or somewhere where you would always carry it with you to ward off the bad luck. And I'm still carrying it. It's more than three years now. Yeah, I think you're done with the bad luck streak. Here are the results for the day. We made some stars, some little turds as Warner's calling them, little Christmas trees. They look super lumpy, but I'm hoping that when they're dry, we can sand them down a bit and make them a bit less amateur. And that, what is it was called? But I can't remember. <laughs> anyway. It smells really good. It smells amazing. And I think for now, this is all the crafts we're gonna do today. We'll make more crafts another day. Good morning, everyone. It's another very gray, very rainy day here in paradise. And we've decided we're gonna go down to Santander. We need to do some groceries. And we also are gonna walk into the center and have some churros with some orange juice because you get into the tendency of only going out to do errands and not really enjoying yourself when you go out. So we thought we might as well do that. The thing is, we only had one umbrella and we've lost it. <laughs> yeah. Warner, being a gentleman and braving the gate open opening for me. I think it's good that we leave the house once in a while. We barely do it, so it's nice to go down to Santander. I'm rushing because the place of the churros, it closes in 20 minutes and we couldn't find parking. So Warner's looking for parking and I'm rushing to get some in case. It's a bit of a shame that we couldn't sit there and have a bit of a relaxing moment with our churros and our orange juice, but at least we got them. It's a very nice place, the Chocolateria. It's the best place for churros in Santander and I totally recommend going if you can. Oh, there's Warner running. <laughs> I have the goods. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Their parking is the worst. Yeah. Was... Didn't time this very well. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah, let's do the ASMR crunch. Take another bite. You hear it? Maybe not. But they're crunchy, delicious, sweet. Just what we need. I like the green wall, but I feel sorry for the bears being so wet. <laughs> <laughs> look at them, they look so like so 
I don't want to want to be so. One year we're gonna have a really cool decorated home. Yeah. We can get all our decorations second hand. Oh, easy. It'll just take a while to collect them, but... I say easy, but it's just because you will do it. <laughs> Easy for me. Walking around Santander today. Not the nicest of days. <laughs> We're both soaking. It's not fun. I'm so soggy. Soggy. And the camera's getting wet. I need to go. Bye bye. Bye bye. We've made it out of the city center. It felt hectic the whole time because with the rain and the umbrellas and rushing because we were a bit late with time. Yeah, it wasn't the most chill moving. Now we're just getting some petrol also for home for the generator because the weather has been so bad that we have to turn it on every day to recharge the batteries. And then we're gonna do groceries. And then we go home. The days pass so quickly. <laughs> we're back. We got a lot of stuff to make the trip worth it. <laughs> You're a champ, baby. We got in the groceries the pizzas were on sale, the frozen pizzas, and we never have that. It's a treat. We're gonna put a movie, we're gonna turn on the fire and cozy up in bed. This is the nice thing of like winter weather that you feel really cozy when you do those things. Good morning everyone. It's the next day and it stopped raining finally. It's a lovely day. It's, it's very cold. This morning we did have some sun but now yeah it has gone it has gotten cloudy but still it's so stunning. This is the last day of this video. We're posting it. I mean it's already the weekend so we're posting it tomorrow but the whole mountains are snowy in front of us. The, the mountains we look onto. So we have the first snow here and it looks really really beautiful which makes for a stunning backdrop in the day that I'm going to forage for all the things to decorate the house with. So that's really exciting. Sorry if I'm shaking a bit. I'm just really cold. I need to get used to the cold right now. I'm going to bring you with me as I go around the property and try forage for different greens that we can use inside to make garlands. Garlands? <laughs> I don't know why I struggle with that word so much. Yeah, we're gonna make garlands. We're gonna make a wreath here for the door. It's my first time ever making a wreath. Also from scratch, I'm gonna make the base and everything. And yeah, we might just make a centerpiece for the table, perhaps hang a branch with some decorations. And I think that should be about it. We're gonna make it cozy. Also outside, I have to put the lights that I bought for the tree that's in front of our house and for the sauna. Oh, that's about it. Then we'll get inside, get cozy and make all the Christmas stuff, decorate, film it so you can see how it looks at the end and then we should be done. So yeah, a bit of a rushed preparation but it is a lovely lovely day to do this so let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to get is branches from this lovely berry tree. I don't know exactly what it is. We asked some neighbors that are experts in plants and they said that it is not a relevant indigenous plant and that we can cut it without any issues but I think the red berries are just perfect they look very Christmassy. I don't want to cut too much because perhaps birdies will eat them later on when it's cold but we have a huge tree here and a huge tree on the other side and I'll just be cutting a few branches to make decorations. Then we have some of this huge I don't know what you would call them but anyway they're perfect to make garlands and wreaths and to just decorate for Christmas. However I think I might be taking a big big branch and then either putting it up as a pseudo Christmas tree although we don't have any lights or doing something I saw on Pinterest which was like hanging it from the wall and decorating that so I think that would look kind of cool I don't know I'm, I'm not sure it, we have to see it I've never tried anything like this but I think yeah I'm gonna take one big branch of this tree <laughs> I'm sorry and then from the other ones I'll be taking some smaller branches to make the garlands wow I burned myself oh it's hot Unfortunately, it's starting to drizzle, so I might not be able to bring you with me as I forage much more. Ah, oh, no, I wanted it to stay dry. Also, I feel like my nose is getting redder and redder because it's so cold. Okay, let's go get the last bit. I don't want it to rain. Okay, I've gotten some hydrangeas and some greens from our little forested area. And I think that's all I'm going to be able to get. I wanted to get more variety, but I haven't found much else. So we'll have to make do.
do with what we have. One thing that I cannot get, which would be very obvious, is holly. And let me explain why. We actually have a ton of holly in our property, but in Spain, it is a protected species. It's a protected plant. And I think the reasoning is, according to my research, it's because it's a plant that has little berries in winter, and it's a very important source of food for critters and birds and local biodiversity. But of course, because people cut it for Christmas decorations, then you are taking away that food source and basically endangering the natural area. And I don't know what the law would be for plants that are on our property. We have these huge, huge trees and it would be really nice to use some of the branches. I, of course, wouldn't want to endanger the local biodiversity here, but first, our holly this year doesn't have any berries and I don't know why that is. I've seen hollies around here that do have berries, but none of the ones on our property do. So that's a bit strange. So we wouldn't be taking away the food source. And also because we have such a big tree, we want to clean the bottom area so that it becomes more of a tree tree <laughs> and we can pass through here and it's just it's very messy the branches are falling down so I don't think it would be an issue at all to cut some of the the branches now and at least use them for our decorations but I don't dare <laughs> I know that there are fines associated to cutting holly etc etc so I think we're gonna leave it be I'm gonna look around the plot in case there's some branches that have already fallen because we have had a lot of storms so a lot of the trees have dropped some of the branches and if there are are some holly branches from the storms that are already dropped I will use them and I'll try to do some research as well to see if we can trim the plant back even not to use for ourselves but in the future for keeping it well kept. The camera doesn't show how beautiful it is now that there's some sun. It's just stunning but yeah the camera makes it all look more muted but in real life that is like bright orange and then the white of the snowy peaks with the gray of the stone. It's so beautiful. Now we're making the most of this temporary reprieve of the rain and a bit of sun to put up the Christmas lights. Hey Cookie! Oh, and we got our neighbor doggy saying hi. Hi, Vivi. Hi. Hi, Vivi. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. We're putting three little hooks so that the Christmas lights can go up. I got this ones for the sun. They're laying up here. I don't know if you see. Them. I don't know where we'll put the solar charger because the sun doesn't get a lot of sun. It doesn't need much. No? Because the sun is more behind it, so... Change of plans, we're not gonna put it around the tree. We're gonna put it around the house because it's gonna be easier and it looks probably prettier. Okay, we've decided to start from that side instead because the math was not mapping. So let's hope we work now. We're done and they do work and we're just in time to go in because it is so cold. It's freezing. So we need to go in and start getting warm. We're finally inside and it's already very dark. So I don't know how we're going to film this, but yeah, we just need to rush a bit to get everything decorated i don't think we're gonna finish today i think we'll finish tomorrow probably but hopefully we can finish as soon as possible because this video needs to go up <laughs> it's already looking much cooler just with the greens here on the floor so i think when they're up it's gonna be really really nice to have the cabin all cozy and decorated okay warner is gonna get started with the stair railing i think that will be a nice touch then we need to put also some of the light greens some of the dark greens we just need to put some final touches and I think the railing is done, no? These ornaments, they're not perfect. They're not the color we want them. We haven't sanded them, but for now we're putting them up. <laughs> they're cool. They look like a child lives here, but sure. <laughs> Okay, I think this is all done for now. We have the little ornaments we made. They look a bit weird, but it's fine. all done with what is our Christmas tree. <laughs> I think it looks really cute. It's not really showing in video because we have a really bad lighting situation now, but I'll make sure to take B-roll because I think it's a really nice idea, this hanging branch thing. It looks really cute. Okay, now we're gonna tackle the mantle of the fireplace. I know here the branches won't last very long because it's very warm and dry, but it will look pretty. I have this dry bouquet of hydrangeas. They dry really nice. So if the ones here, that are fresh, dry the same. That would be really cool. I think it needs some color, but we don't want to put the berry branch here because it will dry really quickly, so. Okay, and that's the mantle done. Not the most exciting, but I think it looks cool for what we have. Now I'm going to be working on the wreath for the main door. 
I started this the other day. I've never done this before, so it's <laughs> still looking a bit rough. But I did this base out of little bamboos and then some branches I found in the compost bin that I thought were bending enough. But because I didn't have rope, I didn't want to finish it. So I've gotten some more branches to make it a bit thicker. And then I'll cut these bits that cannot bend or I'll tie them up. And then we'll have the base to make the wreath. Hope this works out. I think it will. Let's get to it. The rope we've bought is made of you so that it's all biodegradable. So in case next year or whenever we just want to get rid of it, it can go all in the compost pile and it won't be an issue. So I'll explain the way I started this in case anyone wants to make a wreath and is curious how I did it. I just took the longest branch I found, not this, but the longest one, and I bent it until it could bend upon itself and curled it around itself. And then I started adding more and more branches to that. So that's how I found it easiest. The main branch has to be really long so that you can make the first circle without too much hassle. And then, yeah, whatever branch you add, you just loop it around. That's how it stays together. And the last branch I'm going to wrap around is actually from a thorn bush, a blackberry bush. I took off all the thorns, but I thought these long vines, as annoying as they are on our land, they're quite flexible. So perfect for this, I think. I'm gonna wrap it as much as possible. And then I'm gonna use rope to finish everything off. And I should be done with the base. Now, I don't know if it's ideal to dry out the base completely before you make a wreath on it, but obviously this year that's not a possibility, so I hope it's fine. I don't see why it being fresh branches would be an issue, except that it could mold more quickly, but I don't think that will be the case. So now that I have these little things sticking out, I'm gonna try roll them around and see if they can be tamed. And if not, like this one I think is a bit too thick, I'm just gonna cut a bit shorter. Okay. I'm done. This is my base for the wreath. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And I didn't put rope in almost any place. So now I'm gonna attach all the greens. I have a ton here to my left on the floor. I looked up how people do it and it seems like you make bundles that then you attach to the base with wire. I have some long pieces that I thought of wrapping around to create like the background. I'm gonna first create a base, like a bushy base, <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the bundle method. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna create a base and then attach the more aesthetic bundles on top. I already know it's not gonna look as beautiful and wild as the inspo pictures I have. I'll put some on the screen now. Those are really beautiful, but I didn't find any of those. This is my progress so far. It's looking really big and crazy. It's not exactly my vision, but not bad. I'm making the bundle method and I am using a wire to wrap it around. So the bundles I'm doing is first a dark green sort of pine thing, then a lighter green, which is the hedge bush. And then the other hedge bush, we have these little leaves on top and that's it. Those are my bundles. That's what my bundles are made of at least. And then hopefully I can zhuzh it up a bit with other greens and stuff. This wire is not the easiest to work with. It's just some oxidized wire that we found here on the ground on the property and we're reusing. So I've been too concentrated to speak up till now, but I did want to talk about celebrating holidays, my thoughts around this holiday season in particular, just some random thoughts. Warner and I are not religious, so Christmas in itself is not specifically important for us. And I do have mixed feelings about holiday seasons in general because I don't like the idea of things being an obligation. There's just something about forcing a specific moment. And I also, yeah, I really don't like that everything becomes about buying lots of, you know, plastic decorations just to go over the top and then throwing away all the Christmas decorations from one year to the other because every year you have a different style. It can be very wasteful. But having said that, I do like celebrating things. And I think it's very easy without this marked holidays to let life pass by without taking a moment to stop, reflect and celebrate something, make a joyous occasion of what would normally be just a normal day. I do think it's important to have those moments and the reality is that unless you celebrate the holidays that everyone celebrates, the likelihood of you stopping any day of the year to just have a nice beautiful dinner with friends or with family and bringing everyone presents 
ornaments and decorating for your home, making your home feel special. The likelihood of you doing that outside these concrete dates is very, very low. Let's be real. In that sense, having general holidays is a good thing. And I've noticed that the past years that we've been moving and we had all these excuses to not stop and celebrate, not stop and buy gifts, not stop and decorate a house. We just didn't do anything at all. And then another year would pass without me being excited about doing something special, without buying a present, without stopping to reflect about how wonderful life can be. I think when I was younger, I used to love the idea of celebrating holidays. And then with time, with not having a home, with moving a lot, and also with Warner, because he's not a very <laughs> celebrating type of person, we've gotten out of the habit of doing it. And now I noticed just today foraging these greens and making a, an occasion of making our home beautiful is bringing me so much joy that I do think that's the beauty of this type of occasions that the whole population celebrates. I'm really excited to be celebrating this holiday season. I don't think we're gonna do anything special. We'll probably just be here, the two of us, but I am happy to have the house all pretty and I will try to take this on board going forward to try celebrate more special occasions and do something nice with whatever is happening at the moment. See, this is why I wasn't talking whilst making the wreath because just saying that I've, I've stopped doing stuff completely. Okay, this is the base of the wreath done. This wasn't so hard to do actually, even being my first time, I found this pretty easy. The only thing then I'm gonna add now, I bought some cute ribbon and I'm gonna make a bow. I'm going to make a tie spot here so that it can be attached to the door and add the ribbon there. I just do it like a normal bow, like this. Then we add it to the top and then hang it from the door. I'll show you the final product tomorrow when I add the berries and I attach it to the door. Now we have to find a home for all the branches I didn't use on this, so we still have a lot to do. Okay, now I want to do some decorative fruit bowls. I have some fruit here, all the leftover greens, the hydrangeas, and I think that's about it. Let's see if we can make it pretty. Here are the two fruit platters I've created using all seasonal fruit like pomegranates, persimmons, I think you say it like that. <laughs> In Spanish they're called kakis. Then the oranges that we made the other day, I don't remember how they were called pomanders, I think. And then this one, which is a bit more neutral, reineta apple, pears, and another pomander and some leaves. I've used a wooden plate as a base for this one and my mom's ceramic plate for this one for a more neutral look. And obviously these ones will be changing throughout the month. We'll be eating the fruit and then whenever people come over, rearranging them so they look pretty. It's very simple, nothing special, but I think it will make the counter look prettier. We'll keep one here in the kitchen and then perhaps one on the dining room table. I really like them. And finally, we have this little Christmas tree that we found downstairs. It is not the prettiest, it's, it looks really fake. So I thought I would juice it up with some of the branches that we have left over. Just mix the real with the fake and perhaps it will look nicer and fuller. We will leave some of these small Christmas decorations and then we're gonna put it up there so that it makes our kitchen a bit more festive. Good morning everyone! Yesterday we finished almost everything inside all the decorations and now I just have to get the final touches on the wreath, hang it up and we're done! It's very very grey and rainy and gloomy again and cold so I don't know how I'm gonna get the b-roll to show you the final results. It might be a bit dark and gloomy as well but I hope it's okay. So let me just get to the wreath, hang it up and then show you the results.
So that is it. This is how we've decorated our cabin to feel very cozy for the holidays. I hope you enjoyed this video. It certainly has made us feel much, much better at home. I can't wait to go in and cozy up because it's rainy, it's gloomy, and that's exactly what the fairy lights and the decorations help with. I hope you're having a lovely start to December. And if you do celebrate the holidays, let us know of any traditions that you have incorporated that maybe might inspire us for next year. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Ciao!